What's up guys, Hong for OG Fitness. Hey guys, so we're finally at a thousand subs. So thank you very much. I want to take this time to, uh, uh, to mention that and to thank everyone for well, watching the videos, for subscribing, for all the support, it means a lot to me. So what it means actually on, on YouTube is that you actually officially have a community. Even though I already considered, um, when I had like 100, 200 people, I already considered that a community anyway, right? But now it's officially on YouTube, a community. So that implies that uh, you can monetize, right? Like, uh, of course, you're not gonna make that much money on a thousand uh, subs, but I mean, hey, it's for me, it's a milestone and I'm really happy about that. And thank you very much guys for watching, for supporting, for commenting and all that. It helps to grow the channel. If you share it, it helps even more and so on. You know, I'm not too sure I'm learning about the algorithm and all that, but uh, you know, that takes a little bit of time. But uh, yeah, we'll make this channel uh, better and bigger with time, right? Obviously. So in this video, I want to talk to you guys about judo for adults in Japan, right? It's actually different over there. And um, I read an article on it on the internet and it was really interesting because it was this uh, French uh, judoka trained in France, of course. And after that, he went and he trained in Japan for, if I'm not mistaken, about a year. And uh, the approach is very different and the thing is in france and and probably like and here too in canada i'm not sure about the states but then you guys will let me know right but generally speaking the structure of the class when you walk into a judo class is that you have your general warm-up which they do for okay classes by the way last for let's say about an hour and a half to two hours right so usually the first half an hour is for warm-ups right so you're running around you know uh you're doing cartwheels you're rolling you know and and you're doing some calisthenics and all that whatever so you're essentially just warming up your body and doing some some exercises a little bit right and after that what happens is that for the next maybe 30 to you know 45 minutes right it's technique so then the sensei or coach you know is showing you a bunch of techniques and after that, uh, you know, and everybody practices and then he shows another technique and so on. And, you know, that's the basic formula. And after that, only at the end. So you get about maybe 30 minutes or less, all depending on how, how long you stretch the technical part of it in, uh, the, the, all the techniques and all that. So then you only have about like maybe 20 to 30 minutes of sparring, right, at the end. So that's how it works in France. And that's how it works in Canada. Well, I'm, I'm from Canada, guys, I'm Montreal, Quebec. So that's how it works here too. But then this, this French judoka, let me just get rid of this little icon here. Ugh, someone's Facebooking me, get rid of it. Okay, so in, in Japan, right? So this, this French guy went over to Japan, trained there, studying Jap Japanese and all that. And he realized that, oh yeah, the Japanese do that too. That's the same structure, but it's for kids, <laughs> right? So it's funny because, and he was saying how in France and, and even here too, it's pretty much the same thing, right? Uh, where, where I'm at, okay? It's either you're a kid, you know? So you have training classes for kids. So that's the structure that I just explained, right? And after that, once you get past a certain level, well, they just, whoosh, they go off to the national center, right? Here it's at the Olympic stadium and well, you know, they, then of course the format is different. You know, there's a lot of emphasis on uh, physical training, a lot of sparring and then some technique and blah, blah, blah. But the training is different because these guys are, 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 are on the national team or trying to get on the national team and then eventually uh, go to the Olympics, right? So you, ha you have training for kids or training for elite athletes. That's pretty much what you have, right? Now, when you go to Japan, right? The training that you have for, um, but, but uh, oh, sorry, like the training in France, okay, the structure that they have over there for adults, right, and for kids is the same thing. Whereas, and of course, if you're, um, but a lot of times, you're, like, you don't really have, like, after the age of, like, 20, 25, like, people drop out, right? There's not a lot of older guys in judo uh, here. Here in Canada and in France, it seems to be the same thing too, right? Guys just drop out. It's either you're a kid, you're having fun, and, and if you continue, then after that you go for the national team. If that doesn't work out, well, you pretty much stop. So 
by the age of like 25 ish, if I'm not mistaken, that's pretty much cut off, you know? Um, so, but when you go to Japan, you realize that that structure that they have for, 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 for kids, for, for adults is actually for kids. But in Japan, it's different, right? So the kids, like they, they learn judo at a very young age and then that's the structure. So, you know, you have the, the half an hour of warm up exercises, then you have a whole bunch of techniques and you have a little bit of sparring at the end. Whereas in Japan, the kids, once like they, they get their black belt, boom. And after that, you know, if they, and then of course, if they, they compete and stuff like that, they, um, you know, they go, they try to go on the national team and, you know, I'm not too sure I works there, but I imagine it's somewhat the same thing. But then what happens is that there's a lot of adults, 25 and over, 25 to 50 or whatever, right? According to this, um, this article that I read, these guys, they still practice judo, but the structure is actually they're very different. So it's very interesting because this might be the key to, um, to keeping adults into judo, right? Because for those of you guys who don't know, I, I started judo five years ago. Uh, I was uh, 30, 30, 30, uh, 30, 30, yeah, 30, no, 35 maybe? Yeah, yeah, no, 36, 36, no, yeah, 36 years old, So, because I'm 41 right now. So I started judo much later in life, right? But I did do six years of uh, BJJ before that. So then I transitioned to judo, which was kind of a weird switch, but hey, that's what happened. Like I explained that in other videos, but let me just go on with my story. So that might actually be the key to keeping adults in judo, right? So it's, here's the structure for adults, like 25 and over, who are like no longer kids, and most of them are like black belts because, you know, they, 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 they got the black belt a long time ago, but you know, they don't, they, they're not, uh, or maybe they've competed a little bit, but now it's just like, okay, they just wanna practice judo because, well, it's good for them, right? Because judo is not just a martial art, it's also a philosophy, a way of being, it's a method um, to, uh, to better society, so to speak. Like the two main things in judo is, uh, um, maximum effectiveness and mutual prosperity. So it's kind of like a tool that uh, uh, Jigoro Kano, Kano, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it was a tool he developed to essentially better, better the person, right? And, and better society in essence. So the philosophy is a little bit different, right? Well, not different, but actually that's, that's what it is. So what happens is that people still want to train. Like, you know, just because you uh, you got your black belt, you don't stop. Just because you didn't, uh, you're not competing anymore or like you're maybe for, for whatever reason, uh, you know, you're you're not interested in, in going to the Olympics or whatnot, it doesn't matter. Like you could still train and progress. And so supposedly, according to this article, there's guys between 25 to 50, you know? So that's, that's, that's pretty good, man. That's really, really good news for us, right? And this is the structure. So you walk, so it's a two hour class. And uh, what you do is you walk in and the first 15 to 30 minutes is the warm up. Okay, this is what happens in the first hour. So when you walk in and here in Japan, like people have work, I mean here too, but they work a lot there. And of course, uh, those, these clubs that, that ca these courses, these clubs that cater to, uh, to the adults, right? 25 and over, like they know that, Hey, these guys work a lot. They have other engagements. They're not always going to be there on time. You know, you can't treat them like kids like me. When I come late, I get chewed out. Right. And it kind of sucks. Cause I'm not a, I'm not a damn kid. You know what I mean? I'm 41. So if I have like a, an extra client, uh, at the gym, cause I'm, I'm, I'm a personal trainer. So if I have an extra client or a client comes late or whatever, or, you know, like, or last minute, I mean, Hey, it's money, man. I gotta, you know, I gotta work, you know, so I might uh, get there 15 minutes late and I get chewed out in Japan. It doesn't work that way. If you're an adult, you're not getting chewed out for coming late. People understand that you're working, you know, uh, and, and over there, they, they work a lot, man. It's very, so you, let's say you get to the class, the first 15 minutes you warm up. If you came late, well, then you warm up in your own corner. You do whatever you need to do to warm up, you know, because by that time you're already, um, you've already been doing do judo for a while. Uh, you have your black belt. So boom, right away. Okay. Uh, that's what you do. So you warm up and after, let's say your initial 15 minute warm up, you have half an hour of ground, right? Of newaza. So you're ground fighting, you're grappling on the ground, boom, 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 boom. And that serves as a really good warm up, really good warm up. you know, no impact yet. You know, you're just uh, doing your thing on the ground. And then after that, and we're still in the same hour here. So 15 minutes of warm up, 
30 minutes of uh, randori on the ground. Then after that, 15 minutes of uchikomi, right? So you're practicing entries, boom, 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 boom. And people take that seriously. And after that, guess what you do in the last hour? It's all randori. That's all it is. So you just, and of course, um, you can do as many randoris as you want and you can sit up whenever you want, right? So there's, and then after that, the instructors, the coaches, they're there and then they come and of course they supervise. And of course they, um, in between breaks, they'll coach you on this, coach you on that, or you know, they'll coach people who need help and all that. And then there you go, you're done. So you get, um, and supposedly this is super beneficial for the evolution of the, uh, of, of the students, right? Of these uh, judokas. And you know, a lot of them are already black belts. So like they just have to perfect their technique and they just have to keep working on, and they get to work on what they want to work on. They get to choose different partners, you know, and there's a lot of people. So it's really fun. Uh, they get a lot of the sparring in, they, you know, and they, you develop faster this way. The more randori you do, the, the faster, um, the faster you, you progress, right? So I really like that, uh, that idea, you know, for, for especially older guys, you know? And the thing is when I do, when I train with, um, with coaches, when I train with my coach and the way he structures his classes, right away we come in and if it's a, it's a, if it's a how do you say it? it's usually for more advanced students, but I think even for for um, for beginners, well for beginners you really gotta learn how to break fall first, right? And then you gotta learn the entries and all that, but still it's beneficial I find. So the way my coach does it is that okay we walk in, boom right away. If it's one of those classes where um, well because he only gives classes for for people who compete. So we walk in right away on the ground. We do like about uh, maybe I would say six six rounds of six minutes. Uh, no, six rounds of about three minutes, right, Randori? So we start off the first three uh, light, you know. So it's just warm up. We're just moving. We're just exchanging. You do one move, I do one move, and so on and so on. And then we warm, we keep warming up like that for about uh, three rounds of three minutes. So that's nine minutes. And then boom, after that, now that we're all warmed up, now we go hard. You know, now we're going hard, but we're on the ground. After that, after, then he shows um, uh, one or two things on the ground, like uh, techniques, right? And then we practice that. Then boom, then he shows like uh, one one or two techniques standing up. And then that's it. Then after that, at the end of the, then we, we spar. It's randori, you know, all the way through. But we only have one hour and a half classes here, like uh, when he does the classes. Now, so that's another way that I really enjoy. And then, of course, I I went to a, a, a another club recently that was closer to home. And uh, the, the coach there, he's an Olympian. So his format was really interesting too. So we come in and then we're playing, um, well, we warm up playing this game. Uh, it's kind of like soccer, but just with your hands, right? And you can tackle and stuff like that. But one, when you have the ball in your hand, like you can't run, you gotta throw it to someone and people could tackle you and stuff. So we, we do that, we warm up for about maybe uh, uh, half an hour playing games, uh, playing that game, right? And after that, we go right into, um, right into Randori, we go into, um, we, we spar on the ground. Oh, this is the days that we do, sorry, we do, uh, we do Newaza, right? So then we, right away we're on the ground, and then we spar, we spar, we do randori, 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 randori. And only towards the end, he shows, okay guys, stop, finish, all right, here, here's the technique I wanna show you guys, and boom, that's it, that's the class. Um, but, um, sorry, what was I trying to get at? So I find that, like that structure there, it's more interesting for me, and that structure, like there's two structures here, right? From my coach and the, the, other, uh, the other coach who's an, uh, an Olympian, I like those structures, you know? I don't really like the, uh, the whole warm up, push up, exercise, all that stuff. And then after that, like show a billion, like uh, five, six, seven techniques. And then after that, a little bit of sparring at the end. I like um, I like the other approaches where we do a lot of sparring, right? So I, I really like that, uh, that formula that they do in Japan, right? Like um, you walk in, you warm up, right? You don't get chewed out if you're late. It doesn't matter, you're an adult, it's an adult class. You know, you already, uh, you're everybody there's a little bit more advanced already so then after that we um you warm up then we do groundwork right away boom 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 then we practice uchikumi which is super important the entries in judo and then after that we go like uh we go randori tachi waza so we're all standing up and just doing our thing right i really like that i think that uh it progresses you faster it gives you a super good workout your your conditioning your fitness everything is top notch you know um now there was the argument that well this is good for black belts you know 
uh, but what about beginners, right? And supposedly, like I, I'd have to think on this, but even for beginners, it would be actually pretty good because what happens is that, you know, a lot of times you gotta learn, you don't need, even as a beginner, like you don't need me to, you don't need me to show you uh, like a bunch of techniques. You need to practice those techniques, right? So a lot of times, let's say you come in, you warm up, even as a beginner, you warm up. After that, you're on the ground. And then um, of course, okay, that might be a little bit trickier, right? If you really know nothing. But I mean, if we, you're with guys who, who if the the sensei is there, the coach is there, I'm sure he could just show you a couple of things. And, and by fighting, you learn too. And they coach you while, while you're fighting, I, I feel. I, I mean, it, it would be, it could make sense. I could definitely coach somebody because I've, I've, I've done randori with like to total beginners, right? And of course, I would show them what to do. I would explain to them while I'm, you know, like um, rolling with them, so to speak. So then they get a good feel for it. You know, you show one or two moves, then you keep fighting. Okay, you know, it's, so I think you need a combination of the two. To, to progress faster. So you need, you need, okay, this is a technique, don't do this. Okay, let's go again, boom, 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 boom. And then, and so on and so on. And after that, uchikomi is super important. So, you know, you work on your uchikomi, uh, which is the entries. And even as a beginner, well there, you know, then you're, you're being coached there, uchikomi with your partner, your coach or whatever. And then after that, well, you know, then you go into, uh, then you go into sparring, right? So supposedly like even for beginners, it, 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 uh, it's actually pretty good. Uh, according to this article and the reason being is that well like the coach is there like you, and here's the thing right i'm not sure about japan but i know that in in, in france right it, it works something like if you for each 10 students you have to have one coach right because already it's it's a lot of, like even even 10 people i mean one coach for 10 people you know that's that's five pairs right like uh, on the tatami if you have enough space uh, who, who are going to be fighting at the same time but if you have more than 10 people right you have to have two coaches right that's like the general gist of it the rule that you're supposed to respect so i imagine that if you're you know if you're like 20 or 30 there are, are going to be a couple of uh, coaches there you know so those guys are going to be supervising helping you out uh you know Get paying you a, like paying attention to you and then uh the other guys well they're doing their thing and then you know the coaches they, they go around and they they help people out and um yeah so i think it's a, it's a wonderful setup and that's the thing too and oh one one last thing too is that when um they say that a lot of like in in uh in these universities because there's a lot of like big clubs and very strong judokas and, and judo clubs in universities over there in japan right because it's the it's their sport so it's more prevalent it's a little bit everywhere it's pretty much everywhere and it's part of their, their culture and all that and the way they were making adults progress faster right and get into it all is that they would start them with newaza so groundwork they would just push the groundwork on them because then these people would adapt themselves much faster they would get stronger they'd get more conditioned they'd have fun they'd learn a whole bunch of stuff and after that, when it's time, then they would, uh, then they would, uh, how do you say it? Uh, then they would integrate, start integrating the stand-up, all the stand-up stuff, you know? All the throws, all the this, all the that, and of course they work on break falling. And all this so that they could drive them to get onto the team and then compete. Because they compete between, there's teams in the universities and other universities that they compete. But when you're competing with guys who are like um, uh, just getting into it, let's say university lasts four years, well, you got four years to form the guy, so what's the best way to form an adult quick, quick, right? And get them like, get them rolling as fast as possible and competing, well, you start with the ground. You start with the ground, ta 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 ta. you blast that out, okay? You get them strong, efficient on the ground, builds confidence, after that, then you, you, you you start incorporating the stand-up and get this. After that, the competitions. That's why they're Kosen competitions, Kosen judo. So that's where they they essentially, you know, it doesn't finish once it's thrown. Like you have to, you can throw the guy, like I'll have to revise the rules. I, it's been a while, but it doesn't finish just because you threw the guy on his back. Like you still have to go on the ground and, you know, submit him or, or, or pin him. So you have to submit the guy or you have to hold him down for, uh, I guess, 20 seconds. I think it's the same rules as, you know, regular Olympic style sport judo, but uh, that's it. So then everyone can compete and it's, it's like, okay, so even if you, you don't have as much experience um, with the, uh, standing up, but if, uh, if you're really strong on the ground, 
and comfortable. Like even if you get thrown after that, well, you know, it's after that it's it's groundwork, right? So it's super interesting. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you think this is a good structure? How's the structure where you guys are at? I know there's a lot of guys from different countries, you know, from Germany, from from oh man, all over the place, man. So that's really cool. And uh, thank you again for you know all the support, thousand subs. That's a, we're an officially a community now, all right? And uh, so let me know, like, comment, subscribe, and of course, click on the notification bell. And let me know what you guys think of this. Like, do you think it's, uh, it would be a good approach for, for adults or not? I definitely think so. How's the structure in your club, uh, in your country? Do you guys do it like the, uh, the typical France uh, American way, or do you guys do it more this way, or maybe, I don't know. All right, so let me know in the comments. See you guys in the next one. Peace.